Hello and welcome back to the workshop. This should be a pretty good video if you make any projects that are built in furniture or doing any DIY which requires measuring of a wall or anything in your home, then you're gonna to wanna to watch this one. So the basic idea of what I'm gonna show you today is that we're gonna be using a known reference line to measure the project that we want to make. And that reference line comes in the form of a laser level. Now these are great because they cast a perfectly flat straight and level line and then we can use that line to measure from to wonky walls in any direction and we know we've got a perfectly straight and square cross section through what we're measuring that we can measure from and then we can take that and draw it on a piece of CAD or out on the bench and know that the project we're making is going to actually fit because we've measured it from a level reference. The laser that I'm using in this video is a Hilti PM40MG this is quite an expensive laser. I've had this about five years. Been faultless, a really, really good tool. If you can afford one of these, then definitely go and buy one. But you might be thinking that I can't go and spend a thousand pound on a laser for my DIY project. Well, I have discovered recently that these guys make pretty much exactly the same laser. It's as accurate as the Hilti when I compare the two side by side and does exactly the same job. And I paid 78 quid for this laser and I, I can't fault it, it's unbelievable how good this is for the money. I'll leave a link to these guys' website in the description. I did get a discount code from them that is exclusive to me, but I get absolutely nothing from it. I was in talks with them about doing something in promoting these because I was so impressed with them, but it didn't really come to anything. The discount code is actually still active because I used it the other day. So if you want to get a little bit more discount than they're offering on their website, I'll pop that code in the description box below. And like I say, there's no affiliate link in whatsoever. That is just an unbelievable value piece of kit. So the reason that I recommend this laser or this laser over this style of laser, it might all look the same to you, is that these ones will actually pivot about a, a reference cross. So the point at which the two laser lines cross to make up a 90 degree angle, the whole laser tilts about that point. Now the reason that's important is because when I show you the measuring up process, we're gonna be working from a couple of reference points. So on the floor of your project, you might have a mark which is important to uh, in line with the face frame of where you want your cupboard to go. So on that mark then, we can place our laser. When I turn the laser on, I get my perfectly level lines appear, and I can adjust or move that laser so the red dot that is in line with the cross on the ceiling hovers over my mark. And then when I turn the top of the laser using the dial, I can spin my lines round so it lines up perfectly with where I want my face frame to go, and it's not moving off that centre dot where the cross is. And that's really important for quick setting up. So when you're fitting, you sort of, you might alternate between a few different marks to get different references for your levels. And you don't want to spend ages trying to line your laser up with that cross and another mark on the other side of the room, which is kind of the problem with this style of laser, which you see everyone using. So if I try and get that line there on the cross, there, and then if I wanted to line this line here up with something across the other side of the room. I turn the laser and it moves away from the cross. So it's really frustrating and quite slow to be able to line that up accurately with something, say maybe your, your reference mark is 10 meters away. It's a very fine movement to try and get this cross lined up with something 10 meters away across the room. So for measuring up and this type of project, I recommend a laser such as this or the Hilti itself. I'll perhaps do a separate video comparing the two, but if I was you, I wouldn't spend the extra 900 and whatever pounds on the Hilti. I'd buy four or five of these and save yourself some money. So exactly the same with this one, look. So you've got your red dot on the floor and you turn the wheels to rotate the laser and it moves about that cross. So like I say, I'm using this laser in the video and I've also got a second laser and I use the two together because it means I can leave this one set up in the position of the face frame and I can then set this one up back across the room in the middle of the project I'm working on and use them cross lines to measure from. We'll go on site and I'll take you through the process that I use to get accurate measurements. First things first when on site, I just 
go through with the customer exactly where they want their project to sit, how they want it to work with features in the room. And like for example, in this case, we're pretty easy to locate the front of the face frame because it's sitting behind that coving that's been already prepared. And the face frame will just sit and tuck behind the coving so it looks like it's in a built-in position. You've got to ascertain a position for the thing that you're going to be fitting. So ideally you want to know at this stage exactly where your face frame is going to sit on the walls. And that's where we're gonna set our laser up to give us the reference to measure from. So once I've run through with the custom where the furniture is going to go, I get the cross line laser out and I position it so that the vertical plane of the laser line sits exactly where the front of my new fitted furniture is going to be installed. So I can take the cross line of the laser and position it in roughly the middle of the room and put the cross line where they intersect right on the back of where that coving section is. That's given me the position of where the face frame is going to go and I'm just dialing the laser in so it runs true along the length of that piece of coving. And that's given me the perfect level line for where the whole face frame is going to sit. Once I've done that, I just run around both sides and mark that position in various locations with a, a pencil or use some masking tape and put a line on the masking tape. And then it's also given me off this laser a perfect 90 degree line back into the room. And that's pretty important because that's the position at which you need to then set the laser up again to point it back into where you were just measuring. And the reason that's important is because it gives you then a true 90 degree line to the exact position of where your face frame is going to be installed. So let me explain this in a CAD drawing as to why it's important to get that 90 degree line. So we've ascertained the flat face at which the face frame is going to be installed on by using the green laser to dial it in, in this case in line with the coving. You might be looking for a tile grout line or a reference wall. So that's what we're setting that laser line up for and the line that comes off it in a perpendicular, so a 90 degree angle, is so that we can set a second laser up, which is the red laser, back across from the room. Now the importance of that laser being set up at 90 degrees to the face frame or whatever it is we're making is that it can then show us whether the alcove or the door lining is actually straight or in line with the face frame. So if we look at this model here, on the right hand side here, I've made an exaggerated example in that the front of the face frame is slightly wider than the back of the alcoves. So measuring the cupboard here at the front, it actually gives a bigger dimension than at the back of the unit. So with that laser level sat in the correct line and perpendicular angle, I can then take reference measurements from all the points of the wall and figure out exactly what size I need to make my carcass in order for it to fit into that alcove. There's absolutely no guessing involved whatsoever. If you're just measuring a flat wall, the line does not have to be cast in at 90 degrees. You can just turn your laser level on and start measuring right away. It's whenever you're looking at measuring something like an alcove or a door lining through some walls, you want to make sure that that laser is cast through at that perpendicular angle. So I do a drawing like this of the rough opening and then do a dotted line through the drawing and that dotted line indicates where my laser line sits. And then the measurements I take are all references from that laser line. So if I do an arrow horizontally from the top left corner and write a measurement, I know it's to that top left corner back to the laser line. That is the measurement I've taken. And you want to do this for several points throughout the wall. You can get a good idea of, of which way the wall is falling. And what ideally you're looking for is the longest measurement at any point, And that's going to give you your width of your frame or your height of your frame that's going to allow you enough timber to be able to scribe that frame in place. I tend to write every measurement down sort of from the four corners and if there's any dramatic bow or, or some sort of weird wobble in the plaster work I just make a note of that as well especially if it's deeper than the position at the corners. We can check that the floor runs true from that laser line by measuring down to the floor in the position of the face frame and also check that the ceiling is again running true and level. And if it's not, then we can put that into our drawing and work out where it's gonna look best in terms of installing or what size to make the face frame. I like to use a wooden folding rule for this because you can adjust the length to the 
length you require that you need to measure with, but it also stays in a straight line, so you're not spending as much time trying to get a, a tape measure to sit or stay straight across a span of maybe up to two meters. The folding rule is a lot easier to acquire that uh, straight and accurate measurement straight away. And once I've done the face frame position, it's time to check that the alcove sits square to where we're installing the face frame. And that's what was important earlier to ascertain where the face frame was going and take that square line and cast the laser down that line nice and square. And that can tell me whether I need to allow a bit more room on my carcass construction for if the alcove was to taper in on the cupboard. So this is how my finished drawing will look. So that was the opening there, the square opening. I've got my cornice detail at the top with the bottom of the cornice marked on here. And then this dotted line down through my drawing and across horizontally as well. And then these measurements here are the measurements that I've taken from the wall to that horizontal line. So on the left hand side there in the top corner we've got 975 and on the right hand side 1 meter and 53. And then at the bottom here I've got 1 meter and 50 and 979. So already from this drawing if you'd have gone in with the tape measure and took a measurement across there and across there you'd have seen that they probably measure roughly the same width and that's what you may be working on to make your wardrobe to but I can see that that is 3mm out of level and this side is 4mm out of level so actually my frame needs to be probably 4mm bigger than that measurement as a, as a single measurement across the thing because we're going to be taking this point here at 1053 casting it down level so we've got 1053 then we need to be adding this 979 on to be able to get the frame sat in nice and level and meet this point on the wall here and this point over here. It's a really good method because you know now that when you go to install that frame, if you've made it to them points there, then you know you've got enough material to be able to scribe that in place. It's the same thing with the floor. So we've got uh, the floor was one mil out of level, so I would just work to the 1116. And then the ceiling was quite badly out, so we've got uh, 1424 to the underside of the coven on the right and then we've got 1442 to the underside of the coven on the left. So I, when I draw this out on the computer, I can add that in and then give the customer the option of how they want this out of level coven to look against the cupboard, whether we show a bit more timber to try and disguise the out of level, or whether they want it like their other cupboards where it's quite a tight gap, but obviously you'll see the out of level more because it's more dramatic against, it's more of a percentage against what timber is shown. So it's all really handy information and kind of really helps when you're looking to make the, make the project and it eliminates the guesswork. For the inside of the cupboard, I draw a, a diagram that looks something like this. So this is looking at the, if you stand within the cupboard, this is a cross section through, this is the vertical part of the cupboard. You've got your coving up here and your skirting board at the bottom that's gonna run in front of my face frame. And this is the back wall. So these measurements are basically off of that green laser line that we put in initially that cast onto the back of that piece of board that the coving sits against. And I'm measuring back to the back wall and it's given me the depth of my cupboard. So from the green line to the back wall, we've got 632 at the top, 629 in the middle and 621 at the bottom. So I know that if I'm making a solid carcass box for this side of the unit, 621 is my absolute maximum from the front of the face frame to the back of the unit before it hits at the bottom of the unit. And on the right hand side, we've got 614 at the top, 620 and 620 as measurement. So if I'm looking at this as a point of view of what size should I make my carcass or what depth can I make them, from the front of the face frame to the back of the carcass, my absolute maximum size is 614 mil because on the top right of the cupboard that is the point in which it's the tightest. I'm going to follow this up with a second video on how I use Google SketchUp to then take these measurements and come up with a drawing for this project. But uh, I'm just going to show you on this project as well there's a little side cupboard which sits underneath the stairs and they use exactly the same method for measuring something like this and it is really handy 
in that on an angled piece like under a stairs, you don't need an angle measure or anything like that to try and ascertain the size of this, this space. You can do it through measurements from those two level lines. So I just look at this as a, uh, again, a cross section. This is the back wall with the staircase running up here. And I've just drawn a rough plan out and got my dotted lines through in position. So I had an initial dotted line here that I set up and I took measurements from that line. So 1118 up to the ceiling, 330 from there to that corner, and then 184, which is written down here, from the line to the start of the bevel, so where the two straight lines intersect was 184. But then my laser was set up on the slope of the stairs and I couldn't take this measurement here because obviously you can't measure from this line to that one. So all you have to do in that scenario is put a mark on the wall where your laser was sat, reposition it so that it sits wherever you need it to sit to take a measurement. You can then take the measurement between the two lines, which in my case was 693, mark that on your drawing, then you can work from that second line and take any measurements you need to. And then that gives me this perfect measured room that I can then take into Google SketchUp. And I can very quickly just draw that out on there from these nice square lines. And I've got a perfect wall that I can then design from and come up with stuff that will actually fit and look good and make tweaks to with the customer rather than just any guesswork. Hopefully that has made sense. I'll run through very, very quickly now just to recap everything. Go into the room, ascertain where you want the front of your piece of furniture to sit, then place your laser level so that one of the vertical lines sits perfectly on that plane of where you want it to sit and mark the cross position and mark up the walls in various locations, preferably top, bottom and middle, where, they where that position is going to be. Extend that line out through the room and reposition the laser further away from the furniture that you're going to be measuring up and cast it back into the space perfectly square to the face frame position. And then we're just going to use those lines to measure all the walls and everything about the project and you shouldn't go far wrong. Hopefully that will help a few of you out. And like I say, there's going to be another video to follow this one on how to take those measurements, put them into Google SketchUp and do a very, very simple drawing that's going to make your life really easy when it comes to making that piece of furniture.